Hi, boys and girls. Greetings. Those in Zimbabwe who happened to be at camp last week, we spoke about that it's important for us to pray, to read the Bible, to obey it, to tell somebody about Jesus and go to church. Now, for the next four weeks, we are going to talk about prayer. Um, I also don't fully understand it, but I'll share with you what I, what I understand. So, boys and girls, we are in Luke chapter 6 from verse 12 to 19 and Luke chapter 6 from verse 27 to 36. Let's listen to this story. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them, without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. So, boys and girls, uh, for the next four weeks, we'll be talking about prayer. And um, we will mention our father. You know, the Lord's Prayer, we start by saying our father. Boys and girls, um, we will try and relate that to our fathers here on earth. I know some of you may not have a dad a father, some of you may have the father, but he does not quite behave like the father we'll be talking about. Please understand that. Um, it's our limitations we have as human beings to try and explain uh, the character of God. We try and use some of the things here on earth. But um, boys and girls, I want you to know that um, God is not like our fathers here on earth, okay? As you will see some of the things as I tell you, um, 
we can approach him in prayer, which is really talking to God, having communion, a relationship, a fellowship with him. He wants you and God to relate. Like we see in today's Bible reading that Jesus actually spent um, the whole night uh, praying, talking to God, having communion with him, relating with him. So chances are you are saying, Father, I'm going to be choosing men I'm going to be working with for the next three years. Um, can I have names? God, that I can choose from. I want 12 of them. So obviously, because the two of them could talk, um, sure, they spoke about that the whole night. And the following day, Jesus chose, including Judas, Judas Iscariot, whom he knew was going to betray him. I want you boys and girls to know up front that prayer is talking to God. It's not like an ATM where you are going and you're pushing a, a card and you draw something out or money. It's not like that. It's a relationship. So when we pray, God wants us to come to him in a relationship. By the way, as you see, he already knows what we are going to say or ask for. But he wants that relationship between us and him. So concerning prayer for the next four weeks, boys and girls, we will plan to ask who do we pray to? What do we pray for? When do we pray? Where do we pray? Why do we pray? How do we pray? We'll try and answer those questions. And today I we are talking about who? Who do we pray to? So many people pray. All kinds of people pray today and they pray to all sorts of things. I'm sure you've heard of the God of the weather, God of the harvest, God of this and that. Uh, others even pray to ancestors or some kind of spirit. But in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, pray then this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we pray to our Father in heaven. We pray to God. Okay? So, boys and girls, who is the question we are answering today? I really want you to understand our Father in heaven. What kind of a God he is. Okay? He's loving. Um... And loves every boy and girl. He cares about you. In John, in First John chapter 4, verse 16. And so we know and rely on the love of God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. And God is in them. Boys and girls, God is love. So when you pray, you are praying to God who loves you. That's the starting point. He loves you. And our God is all powerful, super strong, amazing. He can do all kinds of things. Makes the sun shine, flowers bloom, stars twinkle. In Matthew chapter 19 verse 26, But Jesus beheld them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So our God is powerful. So when you go to him and you are talking to him in prayer, I want you to know you are talking to an all-powerful God who can do anything. Now, our God is also smart. He knows everything. He knows all about you your favorite color, your dreams, even what you what makes you giggle and when you are dreaming at night. 
In Psalm 139, verse 7 to 10, the Bible says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. So boys and girls, there's nothing hidden from God. So when you come before him in prayer, he knows everything. But he wants you to come because he wants to relate with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to have communion with you. But he already knows. <laughs> so he knows your needs. He knows whatever it is. But he wants you to come to him. Okay? Some of you may be thinking, Uncle, if he knows everything, why do I even have to pray? Why, just, why doesn't he just do whatever? I need before I ask him. Um, you remember this story about in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52 about blind Bartimaeus. In verse 51, the Bible says, Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? Do you think Jesus didn't know that blind Bartimaeus was blind? He could see that Bartimaeus was blind, but he wanted but yes, to talk to him, to have fellowship with him. Um, God is everywhere. Um, at the same time, <laughs> when you play with your friends, when you are at school, when you are tucked in bed at night, he's everywhere. Um, in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3, the Bible says, the Lord sees what happens everywhere. He is watching us, whether we do good or evil. So God is everywhere. So when you come to him, you can go to him anywhere. Whether you can talk to him when you are asleep, you can talk to him at school, you can talk to him at home, you can talk to him when you are playing with your friends, sports in class, when you are having a bad time at school and things are difficult, you can talk to him. Because God is everywhere. So we just don't wait to pray when we get to church. We just don't pray when we're about to have a meal or something like that. Or, boys and girls, we just don't pray when the sample do not well. We pray everywhere, anytime. Because God is everywhere. He will hear us. He's prepared to talk to us. So I want you to know that... It's, there's no place where you say, uh, I will go to church. Maybe that's where God is. God is everywhere. He's the same. God never changes. He's always kind, always good, always there for you, no matter what. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, the Bible says, I'm the Lord and I do not change. Um, and God is helpful. Uh, whatever need you might have, boys and girls, you may be scared, you may be sad, and no one to talk to, you are maybe in a difficult position. In Psalm 46 verse 1, the Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So we can pray. In whatever situation, whether we are happy, whether we are sad, we are in trouble, whatever it is, boys and girls, you can come to God. I hope you are seeing the who we pray to, what kind of a person he is. He is also forgiving. Boys and girls, we make mistakes. Now, it doesn't mean you can only talk to God when you are all clean, no sin. No, 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 no. You can even come to him in a big mess, dirty with everything. You can go to God. And like I mentioned this the other week, the prodigal son, he will hug you. He wants to have a relationship with you. So it doesn't matter how dirty you are. 
like our fathers here on earth, they don't throw us away because we are dead. No, they still love us as children. So boys and girls, God is forgiving. You can go to him. Um, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 9, the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. I want to also mention that God is merciful and gracious. The Bible says he's compassionate. He extends his love. Even we've messed up big. It's almost like the previous one, boys and girls. He's ready to forgive us because he loves us. In Psalm 103 verse 8, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. So there's another thing which is important, boys and girls, when we pray. Uh, something about God which also we need to know. That there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's one person. They love each other. Um, in 1 John 5, 7 says, So there are three witnesses in heaven. The Father... The word, uh, the word is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. <laughs> so sometimes you hear people changing, praying to the Father, and sometimes they mention Jesus, the Holy Spirit, they're talking to the same person. But we usually pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus. Okay? God is the creator, boys and girls. So there's nothing in this world which he didn't create. And he, also, he has also given men wisdom to come up with planes and things like that. God made everything around us, the birds in the sky, fish in the sea, even you and me. He made everything because he loves us. In Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Boys and girls, like, unlike our fathers here on earth who have time to live, sometimes we say 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 40 years, whatever, God is eternal. In Jeremiah 10.10, 10, but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the eternal King. And God is perfect, boys and girls, flawless, without imperfection. In is righteous, he's holy um, in everything. In Matthew 5, verse 48, the Bible says, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Boys and girls, this is whom we pray to. This is the God we go to when we pray. So, <laughs> he loves you. doesn't matter what you've done. You don't have to frown your face when you are talking to him. You don't have to look spooky or anything. It's like you are going to your father to talk to him, to have a relationship with him, to commune with him. So boys and girls, I invite you that as we pray and answer all these other questions, who, what, when, how, um, I want you to know who. We pray to, to God, what kind of a God we have. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for every boy and girl. Thank you, Father, that we can come to you anytime, anywhere. And Lord, that there's nothing you cannot do. And Father, that you desire to have a relationship with us as you talk to us. Help us, Lord, not to fear, not to be afraid, but to come to you and have a relationship with you and talk to you. In Jesus' name, amen.